Past tense? Yeah, he's already done it. Seated us? Is that past tense? Seated. Come on, English teachers, help me out. Past tense, right? Seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Jesus took the nail. He chose the nail so that he could seat you with him in heavenly places. This is his desire. This is the love he had for us before the foundation of the earth. In verse 7, it goes on to say this. So that in the ages to come, now we're jumping to the future, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace. He wants the world to know that, and, and the heavens to know, and the devil to know, how awesome his grace is, undeserved expression of love toward us and service toward us has been. But who is it directed to? Those who have been what? Saved through faith. And that not in yourself. It's a gift of God. It's not as a result of works. It's not going to happen because I'm a good person. Oh yeah, I do all kinds of things. I, I help all kinds of people. And I do all kinds of... No, it's not going to be because of works. Because if it was, I could brag about it. But once we're saved, once that's done, what is our life for? For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for what? Good works. We're supposed to show that we belong to Him by serving in the church and serving in the community and serving our family, serving our spouses and serving our children and serving our parents. And God has prepared beforehand all of these opportunities for us to serve. What does it mean to walk in something? I'm not talking about walking through the pasture and walking on something. I'm talking about to walk. Well, walk as Jesus walked. What does that mean? To live as He lived. To think as He thought. To be as He is. This is the way that we are supposed to live our lives. So, what are we going to do today to respond to this? Are you so busy that you hardly ever think about this? It happens to me. Oh, you go through your life and you're busy and you may be serving God. You know what I'm saying? Hey, come and sit down here and let's just talk. Lord, I'm too busy serving you. Now just leave me alone. What? Sometime this week, wouldn't it be good Find some time. Wouldn't it be amazing if you found some time each day? What if you established a whole new habit of finding time each day just to sit down and to think about who God is, who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, what God is doing in this universe and world, and how you have been included to be a part of it. So that sometimes you could rise above all the problems and difficulties that you're dealing with. And you've got problems and difficulties and struggles. But you could rise up above it and you could say, you know what? When this life is over, all of these things, they're not going to have been what my life was really about. My life is really going to have been about walking with God, serving Him, worshiping Him, and being obedient so that when I move into eternity... It's not a new thing for me to worship God. When I move into eternity, there'll be people there that are there because God used me to share the gospel with them. When I move into eternity, I'm not going to have to get used to the idea of what it's like to love the Lord because I'm going to have loved Him with not only my actions, but from a place of worship and respect and adoration. So let's, let's pray about that in time. Talk to God about that. But maybe you're a person here today and you've not ever come to the place of even receiving Him. But as many as received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God.
John chapter 1, verse 14. Have you received him? It is not just something you do in here. That's where it starts. But remember, it is something that you share with others. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the reality of all of these things that are reflective of your great love for us. The salvation you've provided. Lord Jesus, all the horrible things that you would face in this week, that you were willing to face to make us your own again. We praise you and thank you. We ask, Lord, that you would help us as your children make more room for those kinds of expressions of love and times of just simply being with you to realize what you're doing and who you are. Lord, there may be someone today that does need to be saved. And right now, they would just turn their thoughts toward you and say, God, I know. I've sinned like everybody else in this place. And I don't want to die separated from you in hell for all eternity. Jesus, I want you to save me. I want to be yours. I want to turn my whole life over to you. Not hold anything back. <coughs> Jesus, I believe that you died for me, that you were buried, and that you rose from the dead for the salvation of all the world that would respond. And today, Jesus, I am responding. I receive you. Turn away from living my life my own way. Come in and make me your own. Lord, for those you may be calling to be a part of this church family, you would help them to know, to come today and make that known. To those that have prayed to receive you, that they would come and make that known. Or they would come at some point in time and let me know so that we can talk. Or whatever it is you want to do in my life and the lives of all of your people here. Thank you for choosing the names. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand. This will be an opportunity for you to publicly respond. As they're singing, you come and meet you here.
this afternoon. That's a, I was told it's a blue jean challenge. Not to bring blue jeans, wear blue jeans, or whatever you're comfortable in. We have some other announcements we're going to share with you in just a moment. Thanksgiving. Father God, as we gather here to praise and worship you, we're so thankful, Father, for the day that you've given us, the freedom that you have uh, given us by placing us in this nation. Father God, of the resources that we have, that you've entrusted us with. Father God, I pray that uh, we would be content with the resources we have, that we'd be good stewardship in how we use our resources, Father. Your Word calls us to, to be good stewards, Father, to give back to You. Your Word tells us what that is. Father, I pray as we search our hearts, if we are good stewards, Father, that You would convict us, Father, that uh, Your resources be used in a way, Father, that would be a blessing to You. Forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings, and we ask all these things in the Lord and Savior Jesus.
Mississippi trip again, June the 12th through the 14th, 16th, excuse me. And uh, this is the church in Philadelphia, Mississippi, uh, that's looking for some help to do sports camp, to do uh, interior sheetrock completion, painting, uh, snapping flooring. Uh, there are all kinds of possibilities. We just want you to see those pictures. Uh, the, the building, if you may have noticed a moment ago, there is air conditioner compressors outside. They say that they're, it's working. If you don't like June outside weather, they'll be inside work. We need to know if you're interested in going with us. Uh, and if you've already told us at some point in time, well, yeah, I said it a while back. Well, you need to tell us again. Because it's time. There's that thing that's compressor. I see it. Uh, it's time for us to let these folks know if we're coming or not. And so we need to get some response from you guys. Yes, that Monday, June 12th through Friday, yeah, I'll drive to Mississippi and I'll help with this project. So that is your North American missions opportunity. Uh, you'll also notice that you can give the North American missions. There are envelopes in the backs of the seats in front of you if you want to contribute to the in the Armstrong Easter office. But in addition to that, there's a local mission project that we want you to be aware of that's coming rather quick. Good morning, church family. Good morning. I want to apologize in advance because I'm not a speaker, so forgive me if I stumble over my words. Okay, so this morning I just wanted to let y'all know uh, how God's been at work. About a year ago, both my wife, my wife and I felt God was calling us to do more. We began, began to pray for God's guidance and what He wanted us to be doing. Uh, in June of last year, a small group began to meet in our garage and study the Bible, uh, what it says about marriage, what it says about parenting. Most recently, we began to study the book of James. 